do want to tell you a story, though. So story time for you high schoolers. Um, December 31st, 2012, at 4.30 p.m., I should have been pouring over a pile of fabulous dresses and ridiculously high shoes. I should have been planning a New Year's Eve party because I was fabulous and successful, and that's what fabulous, successful people do on New Year's Eve. But I'm ahead of myself. So 30 years ago, I sat where you guys are sitting. I had a nearly perfect SAT score, tremendous GPA, and ranked almost at the top of my class. But wait, this is STEM. Do you guys know what class rank is? I Probably not. OK. Um, after college, indeed, I went to medical school where I met the man of my dreams and earned the degree of my dreams. And guys, until I had kids, I cherished that medical degree more than anything. After graduation, we started our practices like you guys just heard. And they were wildly popular, so much so that I actually had to develop a brand. So that's where CMMD came from. My initials, Christine Meyer MD, got this little neat logo. We had success by every measure. I had a brand, for God's sake. We had, we had a beautiful home, nice cars, fun vacations. We even had like 17 pillows on our bed. Life was fabulous. And yet, on December 31st, 2012 at 4.30 p.m., I sat wrapped in my coziest bathrobe, staring blankly at a computer screen, not thinking about a fabulous New Year's Eve party, but feeling sadness and dread. Why? Because on that New Year's Eve, I actually sucked as a physician. Think about that for a second. You guys are just stepping onto this moving sidewalk that's the pathway to your career. And you have visualized every milestone along the way. SAT score, GPA, college, grad school, all with one thing in your sights. Your career, your life's work as an engineer, a teacher, a lawyer, a doctor. Now, imagine if that moving sidewalk ended at the very edge of a cliff. You did it. You made the grade, you got into the school, you earned the degree, you got the job, and then you sucked. I think some of you would be wrapped in a bathrobe staring at a computer screen too. So how did I get from having it all fabulousness to bone crushing inadequacy? My patients died. Every career has its benchmarks, right? Engineers have groundbreaking designs to perfect. Teachers have young minds to mold. Lawyers have cases to win. And doctors, we have lives to save. My patients dying seemed like, felt like failure. How could I, someone who had never so much as failed a spelling test, be failing so miserably at this career that I spent my entire life building. Here's the thing. My patients weren't dying because I failed to diagnose them quickly enough or because I failed to prescribe the proper treatment. They were dying because of a merciless, indiscriminating beast called cancer. And no matter how much time I spent with those patients, how many articles I read, how many specialists I referred them to, my patients kept dying. Cancer kept winning. This was the realization I came to while sitting in my bathroom staring at my computer screen that December 31st, 2012 at 4.30 p.m. And it was in my mindless, shameless, Facebook stalking, and I know it's Instagram now, but I'm a mom in my 40s, and for me, it's Facebook. I came across a link to the Philadelphia Broad Street Run, the nation's largest 10-mile road race, and it was coming in May, just a few months away. And something crazy happened. All of a sudden, I felt a jolt of electricity. It started in my toes, went straight up my back to my head was so powerful. In fact, until that moment, my hair was straight. And then I knew it. 
I, I just knew it. I figured it out. I had this, this feeling, and it was hope. For the first time in over a year, I felt hopeful and excited about something. I knew right then and there I was going to do it. I was going to run Broad Street. I was going to raise a few thousand dollars for the American Cancer Society. It would be my way to fight back against cancer, my way to maybe suck less. There were two problems with my big plan, though. One, I needed a team. And by definition, team means more than one. So I was going to have to get some people together. And my second problem was that I was not a runner. In fact, until that moment, I had um, taken the couch very seriously. My idea of a tough workout was trying to climb the steps, balancing a laundry basket on one hip and a cell phone on my ear. It was not going to be easy. The first thing I did was text three friends. And I couldn't believe it. All three of them immediately said, yes, we're doing this with you. And I don't believe the people out there that will tell you those three said yes because they were afraid of me. I am not a scary person. So there you have it. I had my team, four people. Team CMMD, we called ourselves. We took our message to anybody who would listen. Our patients, our friends, our families. We talked about Broad Street. We talked about cancer. We talked about just feeling like you suck. And something tremendous happened. People started signing up for our team. Some were runners and really just always wanted to do Broad Street. Some actually hated to run, but hated cancer more. And some just hated themselves and felt like they really needed something good to be a part of. Here we were, team of four ended up being a team of 44. All of a sudden, my newest measure of success was the length of my Broad Street team roster. Every new name renewed that hope that I had just found. Fast forward five years to today, November 11th, 2017. Where are we now as a team and as people? That team of four I was telling you about, now numbers 2,031. That couple of thousand dollars we hope to raise for the American Cancer Society, we have now raised over one million dollars for the American Cancer Society. We have given hundreds of thousands of dollars to families struggling financially. We, we've awarded over a hundred thousand dollars in scholarships to graduating seniors whose lives have been touched by cancer. We host dedication runs, we cook meals, we collect gift cards, we send handmade blankets and heartfelt prayers. Mostly, we try to be stewards of kindness in our community. I'm telling you guys these things because I want you to believe, really believe, that your worst moment may in fact be your aha moment. Your worst moment may be that light bulb moment that changes lives. So what about us, the people? <laughs> so despite a medically documented dependency on cake, pie, ice cream, marshmallows, in any shape and state of freshness, I stand before you in the best physical shape of my life. More importantly, I'm in the best mental shape of my life. I am fulfilled and grateful. The cancer patients I'm honored to meet every day have changed me as a physician and as a person. I'm old. Now that Dean left, I'm the oldest one here. So those cancer patients have changed me for the better, no doubt. And what about our team? We are the wackiest group of 2031 people you're ever going to meet. 
We are <laughs> engineers, teachers, lawyers, and doctors. We're also mechanics, laborers, stay-at-home moms, and single dads. We range in age from six to 76. We are couch potatoes struggling to climb up a flight of stairs, and we are ultra marathoners. And we are connected by three things. One, our shared mission. It is universally relevant, and it's laser focused. Two, our social media engagement. We only use it for good. And three, this. It's the only slide I'll show you today, the little green bumper magnet. This magnet that first year started popping up all over town, and then across towns, and then even across states. Somewhere along the way, flipping the magnet became a thing. If a teammate saw a magnet on a parked car, they would quickly run over to it, flip it upside down, and then run away. It was, it was like a secret handshake that no one ever saw. It said, I see you, I'm with you, we're in this together. It was so cute to come out to my car and see little kids like scurrying away from, from the back. I knew what they had just done. It was not so cute though, coming out one day to find a grown man crouched behind my bumper, shrouded in a hoodie in the pitch black of the night. I was seconds from pushing my little alarm on the key fob before <laughs> I recognized him as a teammate. So yeah, the straight up magnet has been a symbol of pride for everyone associated with our team. But the upside down magnet, that magnet is so much more. It's the arm around drooping shoulders. It's a much needed hug that you are too embarrassed to ask for or to give. It is the tangible evidence of being a part of something good. Our magnet has been on the family Volvo since Maisie was barely old enough to sit in the front seat till today when she's the only one who drives that car. And I'm embarrassed to say she drives it better than I ever did. Um, did you guys know that you can successfully back out of a windy driveway, not hit a mailbox, and not use a backup camera. You just have to use your side view mirrors. Who knew that? My, my Maisie taught me that. The, the bumper magnet has traversed the entire East Coast on family road trips. Those are fun, right? And has even made it to the Tuscan wine country on the back of a tour van. It has held up aggressive reminders to bring milk home or die, and friendly notes from passers-by who just acknowledge our team. My magnet is faded and it's dusty, but it remains a daily reminder that it is how we measure success that's really important. You all will get to your career as an engineer, a teacher, lawyer, or doctor, and you will have success by every one of the standard measures. You will perfect groundbreaking designs. You will mold countless minds. You will win cases and you will save lives. But at some point, you will also suck. And before that happens, before it happens, change the way you measure your success not as a budding engineer, teacher, lawyer, or doctor, but as a human. Stand for something important. Unite a community. Be sought out. Embrace those flips. In other words, be a magnet. Thank you, guys.